in her latest remarks concerning gender equality at the opening of the Women Deliver 2019 conference in Vancouver, Canada. According to the president, Ghana is not seeing dynamism and activism on the part of such women, explaining that it takes making decisions that can positively impact women and not mere visions and hopes, but the president's comments have caught the ire of many gender advocates who have taken to social media to express outrage. Well, we have to do some in-depth analysis on the subject, but first, let's take a listen to the president. The cabinet that I have, some 30-odd percent of them are women. 30 percent? 30 percent. It's not good enough. So next, it doesn't 20 percent net more next year. Well, yes. <laughs> and as if they really like me, we'll see. <laughs> That, if you that campaign push, on that, they might. Is that push? <laughs> is that push that is key? And we are not. Uh, this may it may sound for the years of people like that are very reaction. We are not seeing enough dynamism and activism on the part of those who are seeking this new. Uh, no, we're not. We're not. No, yeah, we're not. We're talking. I'm talking about dynamism I'm where it matters. When was I'm saying the dynamic is not sitting around here talking. I'm talking about electing people to parliament, controlling political parties, because they are the instruments by which our societies make decisions. We're talking about decisions, not wishes and hopes. We're okay. talking yeah. about decisions. Yeah. Yeah. decisions all right, you had His Excellency the President all the way in Canada. Joining me right here in the studio is the Executive Director for Gender Center for Development, Esther Terrier. Esther, many thanks for joining me. Well, are we seeing enough dynamism, activism, or it's just a matter of mere visions and hopes? Thank you, Kuku, and then good evening to your, your viewers. So just a point of correction, it's Gender Center for Empowered Development, okay. Gender Center. Gender sure. Center. Okay, uh, thank you for the correction. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate statement from the president. Uh, maybe I need to refresh the memory of the president as to what Ghanaian women have been able to do till date. Okay. Ghanaian women help fight for independence for the country. Ghanaian women in the 20th century, 21st century, fought for us to have a bill even to protect ordinary children and our own women, our own mothers. We fought to have the, uh, the uh, Domestic Violence Act in this country. We fought without the support of any government, without the support of any political party. We did that. And I have to remind him, it's the same Ghanaian young women who did their own research and realized that he wasn't so attractive to the Ghanaian populace and the Ghanaian women. And they went around to campaign endlessly for him to win the political power that he seek for in 2016. So something like this coming out from him, it's quite unfortunate. If we go back to the question that was being asked, mm. we're talking about power. The, the structure that really inhibits women from us actually actualizing the things that we hope for. And you talk about we not being dynamic enough. So w would the president say that the first lady was not dynamic enough when they were in opposition? Because we never heard of the first lady even building a one school room for anybody. But today, because she has access to power, access to resource, she could do things like that. So that's why Allah is telling him that we are an agency. We know what we want, but we need the power and access to resource. That's what we are talking about. So I, I'm, I'm kind of confused that he should shift the conversation to say that Ghanaian women are not dynamic enough. Ghanaian on, on, on women... On such a platform, do you think it is unfortunate that he made such a comment? Absolutely. Uh, Ghanaian women should call for an immediate apology from him? In fact... In fact, to begin with, I think that the, 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 the gender advisor at the presidency should humbly say that, you know what, I have failed at my post. Because if you are the advisor on gender to the president, maybe he might have forgotten the struggle that Ghanaian women have been through and are still going through to make sure that we have a better Ghana. Maybe he, she needs to refresh the memory of, of the president. And even his own political party, as he said, the political party so hold the power and all that. I mean, the president's statement clearly shows how patriarchy has really 
seated deep down with leadership and they do rhetorics when it comes to women's empowerment and all that especially coming from a, a, I mean somebody in his capacity as the AU gender champion this is AU the whole continent African continent gender champion and he was invited there not because he was the Ghanaian president he was invited to the women's deliver because he is the AU gender champion and what does champions of gender do? They make sure that the voices that are not being heard, the excluded voices that we need them to be there to come on board. You heard so then what? He, he has not failed only Ghanaian women, but failed Africans. Oh, exactly. You heard what 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 uh, the president of Canada said? Because he is a gender champion. And every way he makes sure that right from planning, right from budgeting in Canada. He made a pledge, and he's not doing that today. If you look at the Canadian budget you see clearly their national and both international budget clearly shows his commitment towards women's empowerment and so if you're telling us that we are not dynamic enough whilst we don't have access to power whilst things we have been fighting for affirmative action for how many bill for how many years mm. and what has been done about it who owns the power to do it you have the power we voted for you in your cabinet i mean we have less than 10 percent women in your cabinet in your government we have less than about less than 20, 30 percent. I mean, we are not even up to 25 percent. So women I, I, was in your going, I was going to play the advocate a little bit by saying that, well, uh, maybe he's looking out for those people who can support in this initiative. He's tried, he's called out, he's reached out to some women in society, and most of them probably are not forthcoming. Don't you think that was just what probably he was trying to drive at? Which, which women? They, the same women she, he fall on when he wanted to win the, pol uh, the, the presidency and they supported, you had loyal ladies, you had uh, women, whatever, mm. you had all those things. Did you hear any man, I mean group, men group, men word for Ekufado? These were the young women who were on the street for him. So he wants to tell me that with, within his political party, there aren't young women or there aren't older women who are strong enough or bold enough to help him advance whatever cause he wants to do in terms of women's empowerment. Clearly, it's just another rhetoric when I mean, scripts are being written and being read. But in actual fact, patriarchy makes men to believe that women are not supposed to be there. If they have to be there, they have to struggle. If they, why would they have to be, even be there? We have to make the decisions. And it's, it's always been about us, and it's us. It's, it's us. So in moments like this, people really show exactly how they feel when we are talking about women empowerment. And it's, 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 it's what's quite interesting to, 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 to hear the president talk about um, how free SHS and health insurance are helping mm. women's empowerment and all that. You and I know the situation that women in this country are going through. You can share you, with me. Um, you, you today, the as we speak now, the domestic violence fund, who is supposed to help fund it? The government. If you look at the act, the government is supposed to set up a board, make sure that there's money in it. The government hasn't done that. Who formed the government? Who makes up the cabinet? Is the president and his people make the government? We have a finance minister who is controlled by who? By the president and your agenda champion. There's no fun in it. We don't even have a, 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 a circle, a social, social service for women where a woman who is traumatized, a woman who needs psychological treatment can even go there and get free service. We are talking about all these things that has not even been addressed. Mm. Affirmative action is, lo is well spoken enough. We have see, women in this country who are even contributing their own quota to make sure that fellow women voices are being heard, fellow women's needs are being brought to limelight. Look at the things that Gifty Auntie and the rest are doing, making sure that this women, even your station, mm. you went to, to the north to show the plight of women who are labeled as watches. Mm. And, and you saw the plight of the women, yet we have given power to the president to act on our behalf. And if you're a gender champion, one of the things that you said you, you, you need to do, close the all the witches camp, provide shelters for victims, you haven't been able to do all these things. And then you come back to say that we are not dynamic enough. How many times haven't women in this country okay. spoken, been on the streets, 
Maybe, Mr. maybe Mr. What, what we need to be doing is to stop um, the high-level policy where we feel that it's, it's important to engage them at that high level and then have okay. that kind of conversation on the Mr. table. If I you, think it's not working enough. Maybe if, we have to be on the streets. Then you will begin to understand um, uh, and know the dynamism. You, that you take to the street to exactly. show him how dynamic you can we be. Are. All right. You give me a second because I just want to find out, you know, what other leaders said. And then you do that little comparison for me. So we had uh, a few more leaders uh, there on the platform with His Excellency, the President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. And this is what Uhuru Kenyatta uh, said. Women should be given equal opportunities of authority as men. And also make society understand that women are capable so this is coming from the president of Kenya. Let me quickly uh, move down to Sally uh, Work Zude uh, from Ethiopia. And she's saying 40% of Ethiopian girls are married before uh, year 18. And it is terrible. If social norms are going to change, it has to be uh, at the grassroots level. level so, yeah. of course, she states the situation in the country and calls for uh, an outright change. So, uh, these two leaders were on a platform. Uh, you know, I, mean, I, I want to take off from the Ethiopian president. What she just said, Ghanaian women fought and make sure that early marriage become a conversation in this country to make sure that we have policies and, and, and laws that ban that. And we even go further to even engage. And let me tell you something. All these things that the Ghanaian women are doing, they are not resource that is coming from government or anybody. These are Ghanaian women who are dynamic and smart enough to really engage people, like-minded people who believe in the cause, to say, can you support me to go into the community to do this and all that. Huru says something fantastic. We have the agency. Our human agency is well built enough for us to make decisions and all that. We can vote and decide who will become the leader of, of our nation. Why do you think that we can't be on the table to make decisions that equally affect our country? And you are telling us that Ghanaian women are 52% of the population. Don't you think, Mr. President, that you are losing chunk of the human resource of your populace if you think that they have to struggle or they have to because the political parties are not giving us a chance it tells you for me all these things boils down to how patriarchy is eating men up mm. and they are refusing to understand that it is eating us up we need to change because when you go to the political party i don't see any men's organizer they see the <laughs> role of a woman mm. they see the dynamics of a woman what we can do that is why they have a special role for women and then youth, because we are the people that hold their parties for them. Well, tonight, I am sure uh, you should not balk it up to all men and hit us all like that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, um, some yeah, men equally ones, would yeah. stand by you in this course. But, you know, you're not the only one who's egged by this uh, statement by the president. Uh, let's just switch to social media and get some reactions uh, coming up. We will share with you what people have really been saying. But for now, I've been speaking to Esther Teria. And here you have it from Nana Amajima Asante. She's saying, he said, what? This entire country has been built uh, with women's labor without government support or policy. Mm -hmm. What movement does he want again? Not surprised, though, this is what happens. And a word uh, go up, you are reading along with me. So she just simply says, uh, this is what happens when uh, so, so, and so. A lot of uh, them come in, in here, and this is from a man like you can see. It's from Gabriel Kakari. He posted this three hours ago. Uh, again, we have one from I. WHC, I'm sure it's a international women's body. Men in positions of power need to look around your communities and see those dynamic, incredible, incredible women and amplify them, not empower them. Mm -hmm. They have power. Open the door yeah. for them. And this is at uh, Al Mura. Okay, so of course it's hashtag the WD 2019 as well. So His Excellency, the President, there we're getting a lot of social media reactions, and you can see it right there on your screens. Maybe within the coming days, we would want to hear the President. Maybe <laughs> he couldn't just put the thoughts together. But the very final one that I can see there. Now he was not wrong at all. He spoke 
on point. <laughs> Thanks for this great speech. And it's coming from, well, Aru, Eche. So Eche <laughs> sees a different thing totally. Uh, God bless Nana Dankwa Kufwa, the long live Ghana. Well, so even though uh, the president is receiving a lot of flacking for his statement, some people still stand by him. Philemon there, Blay, um, is equally uh, putting his words in. He says, equality of opportunity makes more sense than equality of outcome. Giving women a quota doesn't really help anyone, only gives room for less qualified persons in some cases to uh, undeservedly make the cuts. So, you know, um, you can you can just uh, feel some of the comments that are coming. Um, within 30 seconds, uh, should, what do you expect the president to do immediately when he's back? For me, he should apologize to, to okay. Ghanaian women. But again, I want to remind the president that if he, he should just look at his wife, the first lady, and see what the wife has been able to do within the, the, this two and a half years of his government. What she has been able to do because she had access to power. Doors were open for her. She has access to resources. So people say that the, the, the first lady is even more than a health minister mm. because the things that she has done, because she has access to power, doors are open for her and she has access to resources. When women have all those things, look at the market women. Look at the little resource that they have. Look, they are holding this economy. And you can't, right. you can't run away from that. This is an unfortunate statement. And I think not only the president, I think that even the, the MPP have to come out and, 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 and apologize to Ghanaian